And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video the nfl draft is officially complete and with that being the case today we of course are going to revisit the draft go pick by pick and at the end of the video we are going to grade brad holmes second ever nfl draft as the detroit lions general manager but before we get into it i do want to mention a couple of things i think the lions did very well in this draft but before we get into it i want to start off by prefacing some of the things i think that brad holmes and the lions did very very well on this draft. The first of which is I believe they addressed every single major position of need. Before the draft, we talked about safety, edge, wide receiver, and linebacker as major needs for the Detroit Lions. And the Detroit and the Detroit Lions addressed all of those needs as well as a couple of more lesser needs, but were certainly still things that needed to be added to the roster. Secondly, I think the Detroit Lions added very, very quality depth. I think that you know, while not every pick is going to be a starter, I think the Lions already have starting caliber players everywhere on their roster, and they have starting caliber players at every single starting position. So the starters didn't necessarily need it to be as prevalent as they were last year. Therefore, the Detroit Lions had the ability to build a deeper roster as well as a better roster this year in the draft. And I think they did that by building depth at linebacker, safety, wide receiver, edge rusher, tight end, and even cornerback. And then at the very last, thing and the biggest thing for this draft the Lions got better with every single selection every single time the Lions were on the board they became a better football team and they became a better franchise there was not a wasted pick there was not wasted value yes there may have been some talent left on the board but based off of the players that were actually selected there was not a wasted pick by the Detroit Lions and there was not a pick that I feel like will not at least compete for a roster spot and make the organization better so with that being said let's get on to the second overall pick Aiden Hutchinson was the second overall pick in the 2022 NFL draft standing at six foot six 250 pounds he put up over 62 tackles 16 and a half tackles for loss 14 Teen sacks, three passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery while coming in at second in the Heisman voting last season. He was undoubtedly the most efficient and the biggest defensive playmaker in college football a season ago. He was the storyline. He led Michigan to the college football playoff. And even, even ignoring the stuff that he brings on the field, right? even ignoring his strength, his production, the actual talent on the field, I think what said Aiden Hutchinson above the rest of this edge rushing class is his motor, is his work ethic, and is his leadership. He simply will not let his team fail right he's going to do everything in his power to make this football team a better football team he is going to do exactly what he did at Michigan he is going to will this team to the playoff he is going to will this team to a Super Bowl and obviously he cannot do it alone but Aiden Hutchinson in my opinion is exactly what Dan Campbell wants is exactly what Brad Holmes wants in the Detroit Lions he is the ideal player for their system he's the ideal personality for their franchise somebody that loves football somebody that was doing that is willing to do anything it takes to win football games and somebody that came from a program that maybe didn't start in the greatest spot but he left that program as a playoff birth as he left that program with a playoff birth and left that program in a better state than when he arrived and i think that's exactly what he's going to do with detroit he's going to take it under his wing he's going to take it personally and he is not going to stop until detroit reaches the playoffs he's not going to stop until detroit reaches and wins a super bowl if he had more time at michigan i think he would have done the exact same thing but now his focus is shifted to detroit and we're getting all of that energy and we're getting all of that leader 
in Aiden Hutchinson, which I think is great for the organization, great for the culture, and great for the future. Now, moving on down past the second overall pick, the Lions, of course, traded up into the first round with division rival Minnesota, giving up pick 32, 34, and 66 in return for picks 12 and 48. With that 12th overall pick, the Detroit Lions took Jamison Williams, the wide receiver from Alabama. Now, starting with the trade, I think the trade was an absolute A+. You get, you move up 20 spots in the first round without having to give up a future first round pick. You make your division rival drop nearly out of the first round while picking up an extra second round pick of theirs. And if you really want to think about it, the Detroit Lions essentially gained 40 picks worth of value from 32 to 12 and 66 to 48 in exchange for just a second round selection. And I think this trade was really good by Brad Holmes. I think he absolutely won this trade, right? Just based off the value and the players that they got, I think the Detroit Lions won that part of the trade, especially knowing they moved up 40 spots of value without having to sacrifice a first round pick. So I think that was a really good move by Brad Holmes. The trade gets an A plus and the player gets an A minus. I think Jamison Williams is the best wide receiver in this year's class. I think he's the most explosive player in this year's class. And he's not just a one trick pony. He's not just a speed threat that outran people in the SEC. He is a legitimate route runner. He runs every route in the route tree. He is extremely fast and extremely explosive. He can be a kicker partner. He can be a kick returner or a punt returner. He returned 20% of his returns for touchdowns last year at Alabama. Last year in his first real chance to shine at the collegiate level, put up 79 receptions, over 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns were at, while averaging 19.9 yards per reception and some people are going to say okay it's a one-year wonder syndrome that's just simply not true either as as when he was a freshman at ohio state he averaged 18.7 yards per reception and as a sophomore he averaged 17.1 it just so happened that at ohio state he had 15 receptions across two years and when he transferred to alabama he finally got the production he finally got the targets that he deserved and he showed exactly what he was capable of capable of with a larger target load. Jamison Williams wasn't the wide receiver to transfer. If let's say it was Chris Olave, it would have been the same thing. If let's say it was Garrett Wilson, it would have been the same production. Those guys were all sharing and taking targets away from each other because they had in 2020 four first round picks as wide receivers for Justin Fields to throw to and not all of them could get receptions. So yes, Jamison Williams may have been the fourth wide receiver at Ohio State. He was still a first round pick caliber player that just couldn't get all the snaps because you had Garrett Wilson, you had Chris Olave, you had Jackson Smith and Jigba, you had the running backs, and of course you had Justin Fields who were all going to take snaps away. Not to mention Jeremy Rutger, not to mention the rest of the tight ends, not to mention the rest of the running backs, right? They had too many mouths to feed and Jamison Williams just couldn't quite crack that spot. But moving off to Alabama, getting 79, getting over, getting nearly 100 targets and 79 receptions, he was the best, most explosive player in college football. And I know we towards ACL and I know that he you know may not be 100% right away in year one but just a few weeks after his ACL surgery he came away and ran a 4 4 40 yard dash he has 4 4 speed just weeks off of an ACL surgery this guy is confident enough to say he would have broken the 40 record if he was 100% healthy. He is the most explosive player and the best playmaker in college football. And the Lions landed him as not only the fourth wide receiver in the NFL draft, but with the 12th overall pick, a pick outside the top 10 that they didn't have to sacrifice a future first for. And I think that trade, I think the player's an A-. minus. I think the trade up to get him's an A+. plus. So overall, it kind of averages out to an A. I think the trade was better than the actual player day one. But when Jamison Williams is 100% healthy and we have an actual deep ball quarterback to throw the deep ball to him, he's going to be one of the most explosive weapons in the NFL. Now moving down to pick 46, Josh Pascal out of Kentucky was the selection. And a lot of people didn't like this selection, but even, but at the end of the day, I think at the end of the draft, it looks a lot better than it did on night two. Right, you could, sur you could surely make the argument that Josh Pascal is not the biggest position of need and wasn't the biggest need for the Detroit Lions. Safety, linebacker were both bigger needs, were both bigger impact positions, and I think would both impact the Detroit Lions better. I think JT Woods, I think Nick Cross, I think even DeMarvin Leal, if he was still available at that point, would have been potentially better fits and better players and more immediate impact guys for the Detroit Lions. But 
To Brad Holmes's credit, defensive line was starting to come off the board incredibly quickly. By the time he got to the 97th overall pick, there would not have been anywhere near a day two player at the edge position or at the defensive line position by the time they got to that pick, whereas safety was falling. So Brad Holmes took the hot position. He took the position that was certainly not going to be there and risked the fact that safety was going to fall to 97. And he was 100% right. The safety position did end up falling to 97. But going back to Josh Pascal, a player last year that was the leader of a Kentucky defense, a leader of a Kentucky team that eventually, and at some points in the season, was ranked in the top top 25 in large part due to their defense a player that last season put up over a player that last season put up over 15 tackles for loss five sacks and a forced fumble as a primarily interior as a primarily interior rusher right this is another guy that is a gold that is a good culture fit will grow into a great leader in detroit and will be just a absolute presence in the interior of the defensive line he can rush the passer as well as stop the run and i wouldn't be surprised if he gets more snaps than both levi on and aline mcneil next year i think on running downs you're gonna see pascal and aline and i think on pass rushing downs you're gonna see either michael brocker and pascal or you're going to see pascal and levi to depending on how well Levi actually develops going into year two. I think he will outproduce both of them in the snap category because I think he is a better run stopper than Aleem. I think he's a better run stopper than Levi. And I think he's a better pass rusher than Aleem. He's the kind of perfect medium between the two and bringing in a leader, bringing in a culture fit and bringing in that kind of a talent is certainly worthy of the 46th overall pick. Now going down to late of night three, now going down to the latter half of night two, pick 97, the Detroit Lions finally addressed the safety position with Kirby Joseph. And yes, the Detroit Lions may not have walked away with Kyle Hamilton. They may not have walked away with Lewis Sign, JT Woods, or Nick Cross, all of whom I had graded higher than Kirby Joseph. But Kirby Joseph was a top five safety to me. Kirby Joseph being a rangy coverage guy that's six foot two is really long, is not afraid to put his body on the line and hit. Kirby Joseph was the best fit and the best player for the Detroit Lions at 97. I think the argument could be made that he has the best ball skills of any safety in this class. He just seems to know how to catch the football in forced turnovers and he did that a lot at Illinois. He's big, he's fast, he's long, he's rangy and yes I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Kyle Hamilton wasn't on my board. I'm not going to pretend that I didn't want the Lions to take Kyle Hamilton at number 12 because I absolutely did but Kirby Joseph will start. Kirby Joseph will play. Kirby Joseph will cover for the Detroit Lions and Kirby Joseph may even outproduce may even outproduce Kyle Hamilton in certain areas as a rookie. The Lions needed a safety. The Lions got the last player of that top tiers of safeties in my rankings, and they could not have gotten a better player or a better value at 97. This pick is almost 100% an A by almost every single person you would ask. Now, moving on to day three in undrafted free agency in this class, the Lions very well may not have gotten a starter on day three like they did in Amon Ross St. Brown a year ago, but... I do think they got some really good role players, and I do think they got players that'll either fill a role, fill a spot, or will get certain snaps based on packages and different situations. Starting off with James Mitchell, the tight end from Virginia Tech. This player is six foot three, is pretty athletic, and in his career with the Hokies, put up over 52 receptions, 838 yards, seven touchdowns, and on top of that, had seven runs in the red zone, five of which resulted in touchdowns. He didn't get a lot of volume, especially as a freshman when we averaged 17.2 yards per reception, but he was a really lethal weapon with Virginia Tech. He is somebody that the quarterback trusted. He is somebody that if there was no good option, that was the quarterback's option, right? It's the guy that, you know, caught passes through traffic, caught passes through contact. He has really, really good hands. This is somebody with really, really good hands. Somebody that will catch through contact, somebody that will catch through traffic. And I think is the perfect medium between TJ Hawkinson and Brock Wright, where Brock Wright is a really good blocker who isn't a weakness, isn't a liability in the pass game. I think James Mitchell is somebody that will excel in the pass game, but will not be a liability when it comes to when it comes to run blocking. With this pick, the Detroit Lions now have three deep safeties, all of whom are really good at pretty much everything, right? None of TJ Hawkinson, James Mitchell, or Brock Wright have a really clear weakness where it will keep them off the field. I think all three of them will get starting time, and I think all three of them will get a decent amount of receptions and a decent amount 
amount of targets. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of them finish with 20 to 30 targets on the season, right? TJ Hawkinson will obviously get a lot more, but I wouldn't be surprised if Brock Wright and James Mitchell switch spots and both finish with 30 to 35 receptions on the season with two to three touchdowns apiece. And that might not sound like an incredible player, but in the but in the fifth round at pick 177, you might not find a better value. You, you might not find a full-time starter. So finding a role player that's going to put up a couple touchdowns a season, somebody that might make some difficult catches here and there, it's just something that could be beneficial to the Detroit Lions, especially Jared Goff, a quarterback that likes that guy that can go up and get the football and likes a, and likes a tight end that can go win even when Jared Goff is wrong. Now moving on to pick 181, they actually traded this pick away. This trade I'm going to give a B because it wasn't anything like super spectacular, right? They just traded down with the Eagles and picked up an extra seventh round pick. It obviously helped the Detroit Lions in this draft, but it's not like we got exceptional value for pick 181, right? We moved down seven spots. We picked up a seventh round pick. Eventually, is what it is like it's a good trade it's not like a bad trade or anything but it wasn't anything super noteworthy in this class now but pick 188 this pick is very noteworthy as malcolm rodriguez the linebacker from oklahoma state was still on the board ranked as a top 110 prospect on a lot of boards he fell all the way to 188 likely due to the fact that he is an undersized linebacker but despite the fact that he is undersized at only 5 foot 11 he is one of the most productive linebackers you're ever going to see come out of the draft totaling over 129 tackles 16 tackles for loss three sacks an interception four passes defended four forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries one of which went for a touchdown he is a leader with a high motor he never Never quits on a play. He was the leader of a really quiet top 15 defense in the country last year in Oklahoma State. And even though he may not be the most talented guy, he's pretty good in coverage. He tackles really well. He's a good leader. He's a, you know, head down, work hard, you know, be quiet, work hard, a guy that just will show up in the locker room. Day one probably won't be a great leader, but you're coming day two. But you're coming year two, year three, right? He's a veteran in that locker room. Rookies are coming in looking to him for advice. He could very well be the next special teams ace. He could very well be the next Jalen Reeves Maven, somebody that can step in in certain packages on defensive fronts, a guy that will be a special teams ace for years and years and years. and may not ever eventually turn out to be a full-time starter in the NFL, but will certainly make a huge impact on the Detroit Lions. Now moving down to pick 217, the sixth round pick awarded to the Detroit Lions for I believe Jamal Agnew as a compensatory pick. They decided to go linebacker once again as they selected James Houston linebacker from Jackson State University. Now, Jay, now James Houston is, I think, can be one of the steals of the draft. Originally committed to Florida out of high school, but didn't really like the playing time he was getting, didn't really like the coaching staff, and didn't really like all the changes that were going on at the University of Florida. So he decided to go play for Deion Sanders at Jackson State. And as you could maybe imagine, an SEC player a SEC player going to an FCS school, he dominated, putting up over 24 and a half tackles for loss, 16 and a half sacks, seven forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and an interception. This guy is athletic, he is productive, he's got some really high upside, he can play off ball and on ball linebacker, and he's just a versatile playmaker for Jackson State. He is one of the big reasons why they went 11-2. and He's one of the big reasons why their defense was one of the better ones in their conference, and he's one of the big reasons they finished as one of the top teams in in Division Two football. He started games in the SEC, so I know he can play versus top competition. His stats at S his stats at Florida obviously weren't as good as his stats at Jackson State, but this is an athletic player. He's six foot one. I think him and Julian O'Quar are going to battle it out for that pass rushing linebacker. Both of them will likely make the roster, and I think both of them can be used pretty well when it comes to maybe being that outside linebacker. Right on a obvious pass rushing down, maybe you have Hutchinson, Ali, maybe you have Hutchinson, Levi, Pascal. Oquara and Oquara, or maybe you put James Houston on the other side, right? You can rotate them around. You can keep them fresh and you can keep the pass rush constant and you can keep the pass rush at a very, very high level. And then with the last pick, the Detroit Lions went with the secondary, which was a little bit surprising to me. And in the worst pick of the NFL draft, they selected Chase Lucas, the cornerback from Arizona State. Now, I'm never going to 
I'm never going to diss a player for making it to the NFL, right? Because he made it to the NFL. He's obviously a good player. And somebody with the resume of Chase Lucas of having over 200 tackles, six interceptions, 12 tackles for loss, 28 passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery, I'm never going to say is necessarily a bad pick. But I think the Lions could have done better with this pick. Nefe Sewell was on the board. Justin Ross was on the board. Uh, Verone McKinley was on the board, who all of whom I had fifth to sixth round grades on, who they could have snagged up in the seventh round. I know they went back or twice already, so Nefe's kind of off the board. I know they went Jamison Williams early, so maybe Justin Ross wasn't a big priority. But the safety position was certainly a big enough position to address because they did it earlier in the class. And the secondary was obviously still somewhat of a concern to them because they selected a player in the secondary. Now, to be totally honest, I don't think Chase Lucas makes a huge impact. I honestly don't think, I think he definitely competes for a roster spot and maybe he sticks around as a cornerback seven. I think he'll be a very productive, I think he'll be a very good locker room presence. I think he'll be a guy that comes in and competes for a roster spot every single year. Will probably be snuck onto the practice squad year in and year out, elevated for each and every game maybe, or elevated once in a while for games if the secondary does get beat up again. And I'm not going to lie, and I won't lie, I don't think the player's a bad football player. I just think they could have maximized this pick a little bit more. I just think they could have maximized this pick a little bit more with a safety or another linebacker or another wide receiver. But as far as the player goes, if he has to step up, if he has to start games, right? If we're down Okuda, Amani, AJ, and Jerry, and Ify once again, if we're down five, six cornerbacks deep, and we're in that situation like last year where Will Harris has to start, I could certainly see Chase Lucas stepping up, playing some cornerback for the Detroit Lions, and playing relatively well for them if he is asked to step up and do so. So the pick, I give a B minus. Like again, I don't think they maximized the pick, but I don't think the player was particularly a bad one. And then just very quickly addressing UDFAs, I think that they got a lot of good ones, but the impact players that I think will either have a chance to make the roster or impact the roster in the regular season include Corey Sutton, the wide receiver from Appalachian State, Derek Adis Jr., the tight end from San Jose State, Khalil Pimpleton, the wide receiver from Central Michigan, Josh Johnson, the wide receiver from Tulsa, and Obini Z, the tackle from TCU. I think Z, the tackle from TCU, has the biggest chance of making the roster, but I think all of these players, and a couple more even, will be big impact players in the preseason, and will certainly compete for spots in the NFL, in, in going into the NFL regular season. So with that being said, I think the Lions did very well. I think Brad Holmes, for the second draft in a row, and for the second draft with the Detroit Lions, got an A in this class. I think they addressed every single need. I think they got better. And I think every single player, with maybe the exception of Chase Lucas, will make the active roster come the regular season. And even Chase Lucas, I think, will very much fight and scratch and claw and compete for that spot. I don't think they brought in a guy that's just going to be a camp body. I think they bring in guys that they think can compete. They bring in guys that have skill sets that they like. And I think that they're, I think every single player in UDFA, and I think every single player in this draft will compete for a roster. I think the Lions got better with every single pick. And I think they're a better football team now than they were before the draft. There was no wasted picks. There was no wasted talent. There are no camp bodies. These are all competitors. And these are all players that will hold some kind of role in the 2022 season. And with that being the case, as an overall, as an overall draft class, I give this class an A. For the second year in a row and the second year under Dan Campbell, the Lions had a really good draft, brought in a lot of talents that are going to be cornerstones and future stars for the Lions franchise. But with all that being said, that is life for you guys today. Let me know what you guys thought about the draft down in the comments below. What grade would you give it? Did you like the picks? Did you not like the picks? How do you feel about the 2022 season now after the draft is complete and the roster is very close to being set? I'd be very curious what you guys think. But with all of that being said, that is life for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.